everyone and welcome for this new weekly community show. It is super exciting because now the game has launched. The game is open for everyone and if you too want to participate, if you too want to play Ambassador Drift, delve into our beautiful world and be part of our community, you can join us. You just have to buy the game for $30, 30 euro on our website or you can offer a copy for one of your friends and you can join us. That being said, if you have any question, any reservation, feel free to check out all our content creators, all our video on YouTube or ask me directly question. I will be very gladly answer you and uh, remove your doubt if you have any. You can also join us on Discord and you can have a chat with us or community or the devs directly. So just do that. Join us on our website or on Discord. You will find all the information below. And who knows, maybe you will be walking those beautiful lands very soon. All right, so today the plan is to discuss different things. Of course, we will be talking about the patch notes, but we will mostly be discussing about the launch What's the plan for the event? Some community discussion and uh, other things. So let's get started. Let's speak first about the, the patch notes. And we have an interesting little message from Undone, which is our tech director. What is new? This weekend, for those of you not paying attention, is launch. The game is going live for the masses come Saturday, which means no more character wipes. However, this does not mean that development will slow. On the contrary, we plan on continuing our rapid development pace that we have demonstrated for the past few years. Regarding our schedule going forward, we will likely do weekly hotfixes and monthly content patches, but none of this is set in stone and it will likely take us a few weeks to settle in, but we will do our best to keep you well informed as we go. We will also continue relying on the community for your invaluable feedback and suggestion, which will continue to influence things moving forward. Thanks you all again for spending the last few years helping us making Embers Adrift. Your support really means the world to us. Sorry, I, I stutter my words, but <laughs> never mind. So. This is a big deal and this is something I need to add a little word about. So until now what we have been doing it's uh, well what we have been doing it's mostly uh, Undone which is the tech director and uh, his little team teeny little team with two more developers working on stuff Adric and Seth. Seth which work on the quest and the social uh, features like the LFG tool or the guild tool and Adric we take care of the the population of mobs the loot uh, and the crafting. So that's our little team of programmers and our game designer that are working really hard. And um, we have been uh, offering or implementing patch every week. That was during the time the game was developed. But we're going to continue to do that. Um, we have always wanted to really give the game the shape um, in the direction that were influenced directly by the community. We have a unique position as a small indie team and to have such a close relationship with our community to really listen and to see, okay, what do you like the most? What are the features that really do you enjoy? What do you hope for the future? And while we listen to all of that, we can really give that direction to our game. We have constructed the base of our game in such a way that we can expand it in different directions. And those different directions will depend on you, on what you like, what is successful, what is enjoyable, what is the most popular among you. And it's the same thing with the lore. We have been writing the lore together. We have set up a very solid base core with different storyline and different 
how can I say, line of stories that you can follow. Which of those stories are the most interesting to you? What is the things that you want to discover more? We can bring you in that direction. If you enjoy more one area rather than another, we will go in that direction. So that's a little bit what we plan with Embracer Rift is to give a very solid foundation so we can build up upon that in different ways. And that will be you. We kind of will influence this very strongly. Yeah, I know. Sometimes I stumble upon my words like an idiot. Horrible. Thankfully, I can't edit that on YouTube and <laughs> remove that part. But for you, you can have a laugh. <laughs> you know, when I record a video on YouTube, I redo my take like 10 times because I'm not happy because I stumble upon my words because I say something stupid. Primax is asking, if I close the patcher, will it resume the download where it, uh, where it stopped? Uh, I think so. I'm not 100% sure, but yes, I think so, because you kind of have downloaded already the things, so you just have to continue its work. Alice is saying, I love that it's continuing in the same fashion it has always been. Yeah, of course. Well, that being said, we have said that we wanted also to maybe have one big patch per month, so it does give you more something solid you know you may have a big zone and some more features and you have a bigger package and it might ease out a little bit the stress onto the devs as well to have this one month to be able to do which was obviously not the case when we were developing the base of the game uh, so we will see how that works and like say undone it probably will take a few weeks to um, to settle uh, like during the launch he has done several patches already to correct as soon as possible anything that could um, need some fix and I think he has been very very efficient with that and that we never had to wait too long before a bugs uh, that were re reported were uh, fixed Alice is saying, what I mean is involving the player and listening to what they have to say and allowing us to be part of the process. Yeah, but that's one of the core features of Embracer Drift. That's really one of our wish when we decided to rebrand for Embracer Drift. We really wanted, and I remember the meetings where we have been discussing about that. We are in this very unique position where we can do it. We can afford to do it because we are not a big studio and a big studio have to answer to certain things. They, they cannot afford to do that because it is not productive enough and it's not business friendly enough. And maybe the investor or the big boss will not agree with that. But we are very independent. So we have a big creative uh, freedom. We can really do what we want. We can uh, decide to stay more ethical and to take decisions that are not the best from a pure business point of view, but that are better for what we want to create. And this is very very precious to have that freedom and that creative freedom obviously it's limited by by resource and by a realistic uh, expectation and stuff like that we cannot do everything we want but um we do have more creative freedom probably that some other studio have and because of that we wanted to really create this game for a community so we do have a vision, there's something we want to do. And we will not add PvP because some people are asking PvP, for example. That will not happen. So we have a solid vision, but we can really give it some flexibility. So we see uh, where we can continue. Where is it worth to put our efforts? And uh, the same thing with the lore. We build the lore uh, with a solid foundation where um, we, we, we have a story to tell, we have uh, a background to the world, uh, and there's mysteries that you guys will have to discover. And, and then from, where, from, from that, where we are going, 
that will depend on you. What do you like? What is the mystery that excites you the most? Uh, what's, where are you going, basically? And uh, this is really exciting because we can see that and imagine things in many different kind of way. And uh, the future of Ember Surgery is really bright on that regard. It will be really exciting. Alice is saying it's truly unique and I'm just glad it's not changing. I know so many MMORPG players will wish dev will listen to players more often and care about them more. But I think that a lot of MMORPG cannot afford to do that. They can do it to some extent, but then they have too much constriction. And some of them are purely financial or, um, you know, they, they have something to answer to the big boss or to the investor or to whatever is kind of tying them. And so I do think that in many cases, the developers would like to do that more, but they just cannot. And here, because we're independent, we can afford it. D. Gilgaf, are there any death penalties? Yes, there is, uh, but it's not death penalty because we don't die in our game. So how does it happen? And I will maybe show you in game. It will be easier to really show you what it is, but very fast over here. First, you're falling into combat. You're fainting, basically. So that means that someone can revive you with smelling salt or with a healing spell. That's the two way of getting someone back up. But let's say you were alone or everyone else is also fainting on the ground. Then what you will do, you can abandon and you will respawn at the nearest ember ring, which is a respawn point. Um, that means that your bag will stay where you fall in combat and you will have to get it back. Everything which is in your bag is going to stay on the ground a little bit like minecraft you still have what you're wearing your armor your weapons your consumable that are in your consumable bar in your crafting bag everything is staying there and all of that is still active but your bag is closed for you until you get it back so then you have two solutions will you go get back your bag or will you abandon your bag Let's say that this bag was in a situation which you don't want to go back there because there's way too many mobs. You know you're going to die again, so you, you don't want to do that. Then you can give up on your bag and everything that was in the bag, including the money, will be lost. And you will receive a new bag which is empty. Let's say now that you want to get your bag back, but you have a very long way to, to get it back. But because you were in a dungeon, for example, during that time, you will not be able to loot anything because you don't have a bag, remember? Unless it, is, uh, it can fill a slot in your equipment or in your consumable, uh, or let's say some arrows and you have uh, some arrows in your equipment that can go directly to that. But everything else you will not be able to loot. And the money you will not be able to loot. So it will really be a question, what is the most interesting for you? Um, if Did you have a lot of things in your bag or not? Etc, etc. So that will be it. The, also, the other part is that you acquire a wound to your character, meaning that you will lose a certain percentage of max hit point. That wound can be healed if you're sitting by an ember ring. Next question, Kuldin is asking, is there a naming policy in the game or will we be seeing Captain Kirk etc. running around? We don't have a naming policy, um, but everything rude and stuff like that, uh, you know, will be refrained. You can also not use special characters and numbers, so you're forced to use a, a name, but you could be Captain Kirk. Carlat53 is saying, how long till we get a spellcasting class? You know someone was going to ask. Yeah, it's a question I'm answering often. So we're not going to do a casting class. That's not going to happen because there is no magic in our game. We have decided to go with a low fantasy route. So you don't have wizard or mage that can cast fantastic spells. However, if you learn how to master the power of Ember, 
during your adventure and anyone can access to that then you will be able to do something that looks like magic in our game it's not called magic in our game it's called alchemy but it's kind of have the same effect it's sort of magical it's half this look and this feel uh, but you cannot be a caster uh, at level one you will have to learn to become one if you uh, smart moon is asking are you going to and more big boss in the game just like the ancient bear yeah there's already some big boss like that in different places uh, that can be either spawned by a quest like the ancient bear or that can be popping randomly into the world there's also name it that are not specifically impressive boss but like um a hero enemy uh, for example the torturer which is a very bad exile hanging out in the fort sometime or the exile smithy or stuff like that so we do have this type of uh, rare mobs that drop interesting loot the FTV is saying was some of the reason behind choosing low fantasy because you don't have the animator for high fantasy could that aspect possibly change in the future? No, it has been a choice that we wanted because you have plenty of game with high fantasy feature, you have very little game with low fantasy feature. We wanted to do something different. It's not that difficult to have um, spell effect uh, from the Unity store, for example might not be the best but that's a uh, reason to not have a dedicated animator to create spell effects can be bypassed easily if you really wanted to create that world but we wanted to create a low fantasy world because that's what we wanted with a more um, scientific explanation about the mysteries that happen where um, the things seems rather normal at first and then they became more and more bizarre as you progress through the game and you have to discover that and learn to master that so we wanted to really give this as a sense of progression into the mysterious and the weirdness of our world and so at first it's very mundane and normal and then it became more and more bizarre these things that are out of place and you can think hmm why is that so why those elk have the body recovered in moss and ivy uh, was those quill back or those kind of rabbit are covered in heavy spine what does it mean what is this amber pillar what do they serve why is there bizarre weird people uh, floating around uh, those uh, tower uh, that are obviously constructed by someone but by who so we want to have plenty of mysteries that you will discover and at first you don't have any answer for them but as you progress more and more answer will come in so that's the reason why we want it so it's absolutely a design choice it was not a way of bypassing uh, animation or stuff like that that we could really have solved it in a different way by having um, unity store spell effect for example or something like that you know so, Okobin, will the game have read at some point? This is something we might do in future. But what we will not do is to focus the development of the game on, on some sort of end game where you know you reach max level and then what you have to do is to grind red and that's the only thing you can do. So if there is red, that will be included together with more zone, with more quests, with more dungeon, with more uh, world bosses and that kind of things. Um, so I think that the, the most likely sort of red we will have are like very hard world bosses. That will probably be most likely the things you can expect rather than, you know, your classical red where, which is basically a big dungeon with hard bosses to kill. So. Yeah, I will expect that more, but I cannot pro make any promises at this point. We have been really, really focusing on the journey. Carlat is saying, so is magic or the ember things a trait scale? So it will not be a trait scale, Carlat. It's more that everyone will access it. 
uh, if you want, if you choose to do it. Uh, we do have certain abilities that are being empowered by region. Those region you can find on some creator. Let's say, for example, first head of the supporter, when you use a salve that you can find on dough or beer, give you plus power to that healing. So like, for example, plus four in healing power. Uh, and more you progress, more you find powerful region. So the ID is that you will be able to transform those regions with the power of Ember, giving a special touch to those particular abilities. Therefore, every role, every class will be able to transform, if they want, some of their abilities with that special uh, empowered region. Does that make sense? Digital Gap will there be a bard class eventually we have something that is similar to bards which is the warlord it's one of the supporter uh, class and the warlord does have aura um, health regeneration aura stamina regeneration aura and does have fierce abilities uh, that help to control the battle so the the most bardish uh, class is the warlord is doing that with its voice too, not with the instrument. All right, that was a lot of question answered. Now we'll be focusing on the patch notes. You can continue to ask your question and we'll answer them further. All right, so the patch notes today, if you want to read all of the patch notes in detail, you can of course check out this thread. I'm going to give you a link in the chat or you can check Alice Blue video. She's providing the reading or the, yeah, well, she's providing every week a video where she reads with her lovely voice, the patch notes and comment them. And all of that with some gameplay in the background. So you can see some gameplay as well. So if you don't like to read the patch notes yourself, you want to listen to them, check out Alice Blue. She will put a link of her YouTube channel in the chats. So what we have been doing mostly this week is to fix a lot of item, a lot of little bug, a lot of little things that needed to be polished. Uh, but there is some stuff that has been added, which is really nice. The map discoveries have been revamped. Area should now be more easily uncovered, while individual po uh, point of interest will show on the map after visiting them. Another very nice little feature that will help you out to not be lost in the wild is that each point of interest is underlined in blue on your map, showing you exactly where you are. So when you have this big map, you have the blue planet that show you the direction of the north and you can see where you are because you are in a point of interest. You really have no excuse of being lost. Well, not very much, at least <laughs> not for long. So you can use, utilize all those tools to help you navigate more easily our worlds. So I just said how area and point of interest notified the player added a map for New Heaven, New Heaven City, which is our city. And you have plenty of new NPCs that has been added to the city, which is quite fun and interesting to explore. So New Heaven City have not only some services like bank, storage, a crafting station, the trainers, but it also have some lore to discover if you are traveling and exploring the city. So we do have uh, added the anvil in the city as well and some more refinement station. And there's plenty of little things that have been added. Uh, very important things as well. Guard have been recalled from various outposts in Dryfoot and Meadowland to add New Heaven. And that's something important because it means that the wilderness of the north is becoming more and more wild, more harsh, more difficult. You don't have guard anymore to protect you or they are very rare and uncommon. So it will give a little bit more to sense of danger and to sense of being away from New Heaven, which is the place where you have the civilization and uh, the community in the lore, which is building up. So special quest items are now marked as quest soul bond and are unable to be traded to other player. 
There's also more quest that has been added uh, to the game and this is a process that's going to continue over time. And then you have a list of hotfixes from the last weekend. Which is good. So check out the thread if you want all detail regarding this. So new stuff, well we don't really have new stuff this week. But the work in progress, this is very interesting because that's kind of what serves as a roadmap. So the next item uh, that will be implemented in game first are the repair costs, the leather visual, so the legs, uh, leather leg armor pieces are in the work right now, and new zone, so we have uh, several new zones that are in preparation, but the next ones you are most likely to find will be the Dry Foot Fortress and Retro Oskirt, which are open world dungeon. But we will most likely focus on fixing up and delivering new dungeon, both regular and ember drift, for Meadowlands and Dry Foot. Here is the list of known issues that I suggest you to check out so you don't report bugs or being very annoyed by something that is going to be fixed at some point. Some of the things um, need some, uh, you know, uh, more development and more time to be fixed, obviously. Rebel Goblin is saying, gameplay question, is the game designed to limit player population consolidate, oh, come on, why I cannot say that word? Consolidating, yeah, in the same area at end game. In other words, is there a build in incentive to cover all ground again? We kind of want to encourage players to go back to the old zone and such, but we we don't really have plan to integrate some end game in those area. So the, the level are kind of mixed up, but I will not say that it's mixed up to the point that if you're level 50, you want to go back to Northridge. So we will see about that. But we do have this will to encourage people to circulate among the world and come back to the old zone as well and to keep those old zones relevant. But there's not a defined plan for that at the moment. Zootastic, Bawak, old trolls. Say the trolls. Mm -hmm. Diligaf is asking, are weapon and armor skill class restricted or is the skill system open to all class and require practicing with the item to level up the skills? No, you don't have any uh, skill system in the game. The weapon are restricted by role. Every role have access to three set of weapon. Defender have access to sword and boards. Um, Polarm and two-hander blunt weapon like a mass or a hammer. A striker have access to dual wield, bows, short and long, and um, two-hander sword or axe. And supporter have access to crossbow, to quarter staff, and to one-hander and an offhand, which is at the moment only banner, but in future we will add more offhand. Um, so you are in weapon wise, you're limited to those uh, weapons. The reason being we want players to easily identify who is what, including the NPC. So if you see NPC with a crossbow, you know it's a healer. If you see NPC with a two-hander hammer, you know it's a defender and that you may want to organize your strategy around that fact. So it is part of the strategy of the combat to know who is playing what. Uh, regarding the armor, everyone can wear any armor. That being said, you do have certain weight thresholds and those weight thresholds are depending on your role. Obviously, defender have uh, the ability of wearing a lot of weight. Therefore, they will be able to wear more plate armor than a striker, which is the least capable of having heavy weight. So if you are a striker and you really, really want to have a plate a bracer, you can equip it, but 
maybe it will be the only piece of armor that you will wear. So it will be up to you to see what's the most intelligent, what's the most smart to wear as armor and you will be able to um, fix that and to compose your own equipment depending a little bit of what you find and the statistic you find on it and your maximum weight. Uh, if you are past your weight, you will be punished by being more slow. But you could also say, whatever, I'm going to walk slowly and that's fine with me. Some tanks are doing that, for example, it's a strategy with some defender. They accept to be beyond uh, the weight threshold. They are very slow, they walk very slowly, but oh my god, they have solid armor. Um, we do also have uh, asymmetric slots, therefore you can have one bracer and nothing on the other side you can have one shoulder you don't have a double shoulder part a double bracer which give you more opportunity to really tweak your equipment as well and yes you're of course increasing your weight gain so more you level up more you progress the more weight you can carry that being said you will probably never be able unless you're a defender a full set of armor so you will really have to play around with what slot you want to fill in you will not fill up all your armor slots so let's speak about the launch because we have launched the game this Wednesday and the alpha tester had early access. So it's today that the alpha tester are currently playing the game. So the first things I want to uh, address is why we have done that because that's a question a lot of people have been asking. Uh, first of all, uh, it's a common practice among MMORPG to offer early access to their alpha or beta tester or people that has pre-ordered the game with some pre-access and it can go as much as one full week. So the fact that we have given three days of early access to our alpha tester is not that extraordinary. That being said, there is a good reason why we have done that. First, we wanted to thank the alpha tester. Some of them have been testing the game since 2015. They have been showing their trust. They have been showing their dedication. They have been giving their feedback. They have been testing the game when it was an unplayable crap. So they need to be rewarded for their services. Three day early access is the least we could do. Um, the other reason is that doing that was alleviating the load in the first area. So we didn't want to have our first area to be super cramped, even though we do have a kind of a instant system. So when one server is too full, there is a second version of the same zone that is being uh, created for other players to overflow there. But even till we have that, we didn't want it to stress out too much and we wanted to spread a little bit more the population. We do also have a game where the progression is relatively slow. So the first 10 level can be relatively fast, but after that it slowed down and it slowed down significantly in the middle level in the middle range so um, even if the alpha tester had three days for advance a player that just started the game can easily catch up with them when they will slow down in the middle level so don't worry too much for that also we do not have a competitive end game so there is no reason to rush and there is no advantage of being higher level it was also an occasion for alpha and beta tester to have a little advance and so they could welcome new players with some goodies some uh, trades some crafting items some stuff like that so last Sunday we did had a closing event to finish and end or better. So I have been writing a little summary of this event with screenshots so if you guys want to check out you can see that for yourself. I'm not going to read everything here because uh, the show will be too long if I do but I'm going to show you the screenshots. So here it is, that's at the end of the event when everyone was gathering in the middle of the city at the embering. That's the beginning. 
when the exile were known to be attacking Raven Rock in North Reach. So everyone were gathering uh, at the the old wall entrance, so we could start up to set up groups and gather together. So you can see the people are starting to arrive over here, and then we are on our way to Raven Rock, which is uh, the main camp in North Reach. There we are fighting some exile that were invading the camp. And the guard were struggling, they could not keep up, so we had to, to fight. So we were soon to be uh, rid of the exile that we heard that in fact it was a treachery, that the exile were actually attacking the wall, so it was a distraction. So we went onto the wall to discover a new creature that has been introduced to the game for the first time during that event. It's our giant, those big badass creatures. What are they? What is the lore around them? I'm pretty sure you're going to be really excited about this. So here you can see that everyone is fighting together. We had people from every level, but the targets were pretty rough. So you had plenty of exile and plenty of those giants that were there. So you needed to be more than one party to defeat them. That's another screenshot of the fight that happened during the old wall. It kind of lasted quite some times and it was pretty fun. We were really having people running around in every corner and having those big giants coming in that were pretty tough to defeat. It was funny. We saw the supporters that were reviving people, falling into combat. It has a very nice uh, community effect. It was really cool. You died a lot. Yeah, I really tried to to heal a lot of people. That's basically what I was doing. Besides taking screenshots. Like here is, you see me on the side when I was <laughs> taking screenshots. And then we all went called back to the city because apparently the exile had managed to breach the city. Oh no, we had to defend the city. So you can see here more exile popping, more of those giants, everyone fighting to defend the city. That was really fun as well. So it was the chaos. It was very fun. And after that... Uh, I, I have not published screenshot of this, but uh, once that was done and we were victorious and the city were freed from the horrible exile, um, we just pump uh, some other random mobs and it, it was just pure chaos. That was not really for the roleplay, it was more for fun. Vashile is asking, martial or dualist, I cannot decide. Oh, that's two different roles. So if you really want to be useful, martial will be more the role to get because there's less defender than supporter. Supporter is actually pretty popular in ambassadors for some reason. So if you want to be more desired, martial will be better, I think. Uh, otherwise, try them both and see which one you prefer, because this is very different as type of gameplay. I personally love the Duelist. I think it's extremely pleasant. It's a very nice support in the sense where you have more damage abilities, so it's more easy to solo. And if you have another healer, you can be the nice second healer that can also participate nicely to the fight. But you also have very interesting healing spell because they are instant. So at low level, you have uh, um, an instant spell for one target and at a higher level you have a group instant heal which can be life-saving imagine your your party is falling down you're the only one up you just cast that spell you're rising up everyone back and uh you can continue going really really nice you also have a damage buff that you can offer to one of your friend or yourself which adds some damage to your abilities uh, the Marshal is a nice defender as well in the sense when it can control the fight. It does have several spelling abilities that help to, to keep in place the, the mob. Uh, for example, it has an AoE root. So you can pull with the AoE root and, you know, it can be interesting. And it does have also a pursuit, so you can catch up with more combat movement. Uh, 
uh, guesty, how many characters can we create? You can create three of them. Last but not least, I want to open a new thing for the future of this show. And I want to speak every week about one content creator and every week about one guild. So this week, I'm not going to present you any guild. So this week, what I will be doing... So here, we are on the Embers Adrift Discord. That's the announcement section. If you go into the community, you will find a forum for guild recruitment. And you can see that we have different threads with different guilds that are posting over there and presenting themselves. There it is. We have more and more, so I, I didn't have the time to read all of them, which is why I want a little bit more time to be able to do this new section of the show a little bit better. But starting next week, I will be introducing one guild every week, showing maybe a screenshot, showing their website, telling you about them. But this week, I suggest you to check out the Discord server. And if you don't have a guild, you can check out the guild like for example embers after that is the guild of alice blue however what we can do is to present a new content creator that has created a nice little review about embers adrift on youtube this person is called that ericsson is also streaming on twitch tv before that ericsson was specialized into crowfall content but then for various reasons he stopped to play crowfall he uh, get out of the loop and stopped to produce video at all he was looking for a new game to play and to invest him himself and he discovered Embers Adrift. We cannot blame him, right? And so he decided to produce Embers Adrift content on his YouTube channel. And I do believe that he's going to specialize into that. So a nice channel to start to follow and a nice person to get to know. He's also very sympathetic. So I'm going to try and to, you know, to show you a little bit of his video. So I will not show you all of the video. So you need to get on his channel and to give a like and to help him to promote his content. But let's see what he's saying, right? Uh, there was a little game that flew under many people's radar and that game is Embers Adrift. And today I want to talk about it, what my plan is and my thoughts on if it's for you. It's a small indie group uh, called Stormhaven Studios who created it. I believe they're uh, European based. I'm not exactly sure that the where they're based out of. It's an MMORPG with a box price and a monthly subscription model. And I know exactly what you're gonna think. Subscription these days, box price as well. But hear me out. I think a uh, sub price for a game is not that bad personally, especially when the game has zero cash shop and zero pay to win elements. I can appreciate a title who tries to fight against what the seemingly new norm is in the MMO space. I mean, long gone are the days of looking at someone's armor and knowing what they accomplished. Now everyone has pay-to-win cosmetics and things like that, so it's a bit of a bit of fresh air. Also, the studio, you know, they could go the easy route and try to make a lot of money from microtransactions and pay-to-win, but they don't. So I don't think it's wrong to uh, charge a box price and a subscription. The price is fair at the moment at $29.99. Uh, there's a promotion going on for that, as well as a $9.99 monthly sub that will probably go to $15, a traditional sub price after this promotional period. But I also like a studio who listens and they uh, they reached out to me because I had some performance issues in some of the tests. I made a couple of posts on Twitter complaining just a little bit about certain things that, that, um, that I face and they reached out to me directly to provide me with full beta access. It was at that moment that I snap purchased uh, the game without any regrets. I like to support smaller studios who care and so far I can tell that they do. Uh, a, a disclaimer though is the gameplay you see in the background is from my uh, Twitch stream and my computer is not optimal. That's one of the reasons why I had trouble. So uh, don't hold that against them. Uh, I need to upgrade. It's been a while. So don't judge the game from my footage. There we go. I think it's a very nice video. So I'm giving you a link towards this YouTube channel or towards that video. So yeah, I want to promote a content creator every week, a different one. 
hopefully. Sometimes there will be the same ones that will pop in time to time. And so that is that Ericsson. So check him out, check his uh, YouTube video. It was quite interesting. I'm glad that some of you have already seen it. Uh, I, I, I watched it all and I think it was a very nice and it had a lot of very nice things to say. So I'm very grateful about this video. And here is his Twitch channel. So you can sh check him out. So here is the about section. There it is. You can also follow him on Twitter or on Instagram if you like. So you can see here that he was uh, focusing on Crowfall before he stopped to, to do that. So F11 for hiding your interface and F12 for screenshots. And then you will find your screenshot in a file in your pictures in the C drive. Unless you place it differently, but that's where it will go. But I do believe that the game is very pretty. I don't really understand the comments of the people that are saying the game is not, it's not nice. I think it's a very pretty game. I think it's beautiful. The landscape are beautiful. Oh, here we are at Ilgrit's farm. And we have plenty of drifter as well. That are enjoying their first time. Oh, that's someone who that knew me. Hello, hi. Here. Hey, Philip. Sorry, I was. I was not in <laughs> I didn't have my interface on. Hey, this, cheers. All right, let's remove it. F11. And here we are approaching Drifter Landing. You can recognize it from far by the big tower here in the distance. Of course, it's a little bit misty right now, so you don't see it very clearly. But you have a tower, you have one tower here, which is square, and you have that big tower which is round, uh, you will see it uh, more distinctively as we approach. You can already see it uh, through the trees here. And I am going to say hi to people. And then I'm uh, going to uh, maybe to, to form a group and help out people starting up their adventure. I'm Dirt Diggler, sorry, sorry. Uh, thinking about trying this game, still not sure yet. How is it? Well. I will tell you it's magnificent, it's beautiful, it's gorgeous, but it's my game. So it's better than the other people are answering you that question. However, what I can tell you is that it's a slow paced, immersive MMORPG aimed for group, mostly group play, heavily encouraged to play uh, as a group. And it has a slow paced tactical combat. It's a pure PVE game. So no top targets, and it's a very long journey. So the goal is to have a long journey, is to not to rush to end game. And so you can really take the time to dive deep into your character progression. Hey, that's a premax. Hi, hello. I'm going to say hi to everyone. So everyone is making new character and everything. So that's all the beta tester and there's plenty of people. Really a lot of people right now. I, I, I do think there's probably several instances of the same zone at this point. But I want to say hi to everyone because a lot of those people are old friends. Some I do not know but... And you can see that people can create their character differently. I, I would also like to see how people are creating their character. Hi. Small character, big character. Yeah. Welcome, everyone. <laughs>
Oh, look at this. This is Gerdy. Hi. <clears throat> yeah, it has been confirmed by Undone. Yeah, that there is some incensing done. But it is it's done in a kind of crude way. And it's of course working on that. Yeah, that's we we have a second layer, a uh, second zone or something like that. Okay, so as we are um, group of four, chef three give the best experience. You slept like 22 hours. Uh, yeah, I understand that. Yeah. Uh, okay. Want to group up? Za. Where is Alice with my food? In the city. You have to go. Uh, you need to cross the wall valley. <laughs> go to the city. Yeah, Trent. Happy everything. Hey, Ash. Hello. How are you doing? Thank you. How are you doing? It's really nice to see you. Ashrion Gaming is a nice friend that I met at TwitchCon. That's where we got to know each other. So we met in real life first and uh, in Twitch after. And he's streaming old kind of game, super chill guy. So check him out. <laughs> Yay, thank you, Reed and Sergi. Thank you very much for the follow. Welcome, and Veliano as well. Welcome, guys. So. Oh, that's so nice. Today is the beta tester opening. So there's more people. It's actually super crowded. Today it's super crowded. We're approaching a 100 player right now. Really, really nice. Very happy about that. And it's not even the peak time. You love crowded in MMORPG? Well, not too much crowded. Hey, Gerald Daggerfall, hi. Welcome, how are you doing? Oh yes, Vicious Ember. Ember Flux. Everyone needs good luck. There we go. No, Jess, you're dying. Oh. That's okay.
What? Come on. Why it's not working? Can I? Oh no, no I know why it's not working. All right, and all right. Yes, so you can uh, launch it. It will be tomorrow. It will be for everyone. Like Ash is saying. So today it, the, the gates are open for the beta tester. We pre-order the game for much more money and have tested the game and have provided their feedback and everything. So tomorrow it's for everyone else. So if you want to purchase the game, we will gladly welcome you in the community and thank you so much to even consider it. And that will be tomorrow at the same time. Yes. <laughs> Yesutastic wants food, he's hungry. Est-ce que tout va bien pour toi, Jess? How happy are you from a scale to 1 to 10? This game is going to be released tomorrow. Um, I'm super happy because it's uh, trying today already and there's plenty of people. I'm super excited. So it's really nice. All right, so we're going. Okay. So quill back, quill back are hiding here. Yes, do it, Lejar. So it's 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 um how can I say? So sometimes it's easier to play by yourself. And um Okay. So to make the stag uh, spawn, we need to kill a lot of other stag and do. So Ash is saying, how much is a sub fee in euro LOI if I buy and continue the sub? It's a discounted price. Yes, so the, the sub is at 10 dollar or 10 euro. It's approximately that because dollar and euro are more or less the same. However, they stacks on the base game. So if you buy the game, it will not be at 30 euro. Unfortunately, it will be bigger depending on the tax that Netherlands is doing on things and I cannot say what it is I'm um, sorry um, the subscription is should be 10 euro and then if you maintain it and you don't interrupt it will stay at 10 euro forever if you interrupt starting in 23 it will be at 15 oh dreamt you are from the Ariana community Nice. Okay, so everyone, everyone is ready. We have a nice little group. Yeah. 
Yeah. Ooh, look at this. Flat worm in front. Get it. Who is going to win? Like, go, 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 guys. <laughs> No one has, has it already. Like everyone is like running. Go, 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 run, run, run. Go get it. Come on, uh, Jess. Vas-y, cours. Attrape le flatworm. Attrape le petit ver brillant. Là. Da, 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 da. Qui est-ce qui va l'attraper? <laughs> Look at that. This is more fun to see the group like getting. <laughs> trying to get it. Go, go, go. <laughs> Look at this! No one is getting it! Ah, uh, who got it? I think it's leisure. No, it's not leisure. It's Vashil. Vashil got it. Vashil got it. GG. <laughs> nice. This is so fun. Oh, you have Ariana Grande's profile picture. Okay. Because um, I have a friend streamer, which is called Ariana, but it's not spelling. She has two N. And so she's a really nice streamer. And she is living in Sweden. She's from Netherlands originally, but she's living in Sweden now. And she's really, really cool. Very nice streamer. Uh, and she's my friend. Okay. Next. Next quest is here. All right. Here we go. I've just joined my group. Target is too far. It's ki being kited by Mr. DDT. Poor Misha. Well, she's mean. Look at that. She's trying to eat him. <gasps> she's trying to eat Mr. Taylor. Sir Taylor. So it's nice because I've been farming Misha. Uh, well, not really. The ancient bear. But I was hoping for, for Misha popping. Because Misha has loot. Well, the ancient bear doesn't have loot. No, you're not going to me. Here we go. Now it's on Xavier. Xavier is one of our guys from Quebec. Look at that. Easy. I'm going to take a screenshot. Nice screenshots. <laughs> Not the screenshot, Cliffy. Ah, <laughs> oh, damn, Xavier, you're too close. You're too close to make a nice screenshot. <laughs> but look at Misha, she look awesome. <gasps> yes! I'm kneading on the things. So everyone needs, everyone needs. Okay. Uh, I'm uh, passing the other. Just because I, w I want the chest, I want the chest, I want the chest, I want the chest, I want the chest. Oh, uh, and I didn't got the chest. Sad. Nice guys. Thanks for the group. Well, not like I have this the, the armor the armor slot to put the chest anywhere. But it's okay. <laughs> uh, oh my pleasure. And 
voilà, that's it for today. I hope you did enjoy this show. I want to thanks again Olo Alpha and Beta Tester for the amazing job they have done by testing the game, providing feedback, helping us to reach this point and to launch Embracer Drift. Finally, it's happening. And to those all of you that are hesitating whether you should or not get into the game, please come to us, ask questions, ask questions to the community community check our content creator check some stream i'm personally streaming ambassador regularly and i will be very happy to answer all of your questions that being said i'm the community manager so i'm a BS. so check out all of our content creator if you see someone streaming ambassador on twitch tv and there will be plenty check that person out ask questions and see for yourself if ambassador drift could be a game that you will enjoy it's certainly a very special experience and we're not aiming to compete with all the biggest title in the MMORPG market. But what we want to offer is an alternative for players that are seeking a different experience. Something which is more slow paced, more immersive, and which is all about the journey that you share with your friends. Thank you so much for watching, take care of yourself, and I will see you soon another time for another video or live on Twitch. Bye!